Welcome to Dining with Dan and Becky at the Glen Ferris Inn. And tonight my guest is Chuck Roberts from West Virginia Public Television. Public Broadcasting. Pu public Broadcasting, That's right. I'm sorry. It's all right. And uh, uh, Chuck, tell us where you're from and uh, where you live. And Well, I'm, I'm, as I was telling you earlier, I'm not originally from anywhere. I'm an Air Force brat who's decided to move to West Virginia. So I'm one of the folks that has decided to live here. Um, it, I, I've been in West Virginia since 92, and I've been at West Virginia Public Broadcasting since 2000. So this is the beginning of my 19th year. Well, that's great. Yep, and I live in St. Albans, West Virginia, so just outside of Charleston, and um, I really love it here. And you're married? And uh, I'm married. Rebecca Roberts is my wife. She's a nurse there in Charleston at the uh, pain clinic. They're working for Dr. Deer and his, his folks. At uh, St. Mary's? Uh, Saint or St. Francis? Yeah. Well, Saint it's... Yes, that's right. St. Francis, Francis is part of Thomas Health Systems now. Right. So it's all one big happy family. And that's where my daughter works, Thomas. Uh, she works there at, uh, down in uh, South Charleston. Yeah. Welcome to Dining with Dan and Becky. I'm Becky and Dan will be coming in later and welcome to our beautiful inn. All right, Dan's menu tonight is a southwestern salad, a surf and turf, and this time the surf and turf will consist of a beef tenderloin and a lobster cake. Then we're doing one of my all-time favorites, absolutely favorite, pepper jack grits, and I am not a grit person. Then green beans and they are fresh half runners from John Brenneman's garden and a pineapple upside down cake which is a very unique recipe for. So let's get started first on the pepper jack grits. Give me a minute to get everything started and I will show you how to do them. Well, welcome back. For our pepper jack grits, you need two cups of water, but I'm going to double the recipe because when I say this is good, everyone here and my family will want leftovers, so I'm just gonna double it. So there's four cups of water and four cups of heavy cream. Make sure you shake this first because the heavier particles settle to the bottom. All right, now we're going to put this on the stove and heat it until it's simmering. So. <clears throat> Let me stir these green greens. Now, don't those look good? Just like out of your mama's garden. Now, they need to cook a while, so I started them earlier. When you're doing your green beans, for each quart of beans, you need a very slight or scant teaspoon of salt. Uh, I put uh, about three-fourths of a teaspoon of salt for each estimated quart and no more because they can always add salt at the table, but they can't take it from it. All right, now this needs to come to a good simmer. So now what else do we need? All right, we're going to have water, heavy cream, salt, and it looks like it's a lot, but it's only one tablespoon. And we will let that dissolve. Now, it's just like cooking oatmeal. You do not want to add your solids to your liquids until they heat to boiling if you want it really nice and creamy. All right. This pepper jack grit recipe took me, I would say, at least two years and maybe longer to develop because I never played with it like once a week. I'd do it hit and miss. <clears throat> I had gone to a restaurant, one of my favorite ones, when we were vacationing at the beach, and they only had three sides. They had the potato of the day, pepper jack grits, and corn pudding. Well, the potato of the day was one that was garlic roasted and I didn't care for garlic. So I got the pepper jack grits, even though I knew I wouldn't like them, and the corn pudding. 
and the pepper jack grits was so marvelous. Absolutely one of the best dishes I'd ever had in my life that I came home and started working on the recipe. So it took me a while to get it to where I had it as close to theirs as I possibly could, and um, this is it. Now when you're fixing your grits, you want to do those the night before. You want to fix them and pour them in a prepared pan, and I use a loaf pan, and then the next morning, this is just like Granny, uh, Danny's mother's corn meal mush. You let it solidify and harden, you slice it, and then you fry it. And it took me a while to get the fry bit down. Boy, this was a complicated procedure. heavy cream and water and salt mixture is simmering. It does not need to come to a boil because it's going to foam up and go all over the pan. In fact, I'm going to turn my fire down. Now I'm going to drizzle the grits in it. I'm going to stir it continually. Okay, and there we go. Now you want to cook these until the grits tunnel. If you cannot stir and see the path you took, then they're not ready. These have to be thick, and that's gonna boil over on me. Now it's boiling. <clears throat> Did I have a clump? You have to be real careful because your, your grits, the same as your oatmeal, the same as your cornstarch or roux, will form lumps in whatever you're cooking it in. Okay, now I'm going to let that soften a little bit. And it would probably speed up the process if you would get instant grits. But you know what is is. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to let it get a little bit thicker. All right, now this is the time to prepare your pan. I use a loaf pan, and this is a, a pretty good sized loaf pan. I line it with saran wrap because on the first few times I made this, I found out that it's really hard to get it out of a pan even if you spray it. And I, one of the cooks and I came up with this solution. I don't even remember who it was or how long ago it was, but this works well. And the grits will not melt your plastic wrap. Okay, it's still not quite ready. In fact, it's not even close to being ready. Okay, we have our pan prepared, we have the butter, and our pepper jack cheese. And now it is heartily boiling. Almost like the lava pits. Okay, I'm gonna put in our butter. And please use a long handle spoon. You do not want that hot stuff bubbling on you. I don't want to mess on my stove, so I'm going to turn it down. Now, if you're serving just plain grits, you quit with this. <clears throat> so the next thing I'm going to do is to add my pepper jack cheese, which has been shredded. So. All right, let's mix this in. It has to melt. It 
See, it's beginning to tunnel as I stir it, leaving a little roadway. All right, I still have some cheese lumps. Let me stir these beans. All right, now it's tunneling. So we're gonna take it off the stove and Mmm, smells good, guys. We are going to just dump and spread it into our prepared pan. Do not forget to line this so you, you will really have a hard time when you're getting it out. So here you are. I need to let this cool to room temperature and then I'm going to put it in the refrigerator and it needs to chill until it sets up. And I just keep it in overnight. So let's go ahead and, because uh, we can't fix the sauce or finish this, and start our pineapple upside down cake. So let me clean up my mess, get this cooling so we can refrigerate it and I will be right back. Before we start our pineapple upside down cake, let's give these beans a stir and make sure they do not need water. After all, we don't want to burn them, do we? <laughs> okay, we're going to make the base of your pineapple upside down cake. I am going to take three-fourths cup of butter and I melted it in the microwave till it was bubbling. And now I'm going to add three-fourths cup of sugar to it and mix it up. Now I use white sugar because one, it'll cut the calories a little bit if, if you can say calories can be cut on a pineapple upside down cake. But you have to remember that um, Brown sugar is white sugar that's been mixed with molasses. So if you're looking for three-fourths cup of brown sugar, it's going to have three-fourths cup of, of granulated sugar plus the molasses. So uh, this is just fine, but if, if you prefer, go ahead and use your brown sugar. All right, we have this mixed up. Okay, now we are going to add our pineapple rings, just like we would in a normal pineapple upside down cake. Now for the edges, I simply tear a ring in half and place it to where it's always facing the inside of the pan. And I'm going to continue this all the way down. Okay, now the next thing that I do is put a maraschino cherry in the center of each. Now, my mama told me that the best pineapple upside down cake she had ever had or made was made with the chopped pineapple or shredded pineapple. All right, let's get this done. Find one that's full. 
So now as you look at it, you can see that it is a normal everyday pineapple upside down cake. Now we're gonna start deviating some more from the recipe. Okay. I'm going to take this pineapple that's been shredded and I am going to layer it on top of it. Now, the first time I tried this, I put this on the bottom and you could not see the pretty cherry. So now I'm doing it just on the top and I think that I'm gonna make sure I do all the empty places first and then I'll come back and fill up the rest. Okay, now every space has pineapple of one kind or another on it. So I'm just going to sort of sprinkle this and spread it as much as I can now. All right, there we are. So that's the total of two changes we've made in a traditional pineapple upside down cake. The first one was white sugar for brown, and this time I'm using two layers of pineapple. Okay, so now let's start the cake. All right, you need one and a half cups of flour. Two teaspoons of baking powder one half cup of sugar, one half teaspoon of salt, then one half, one and a half cups of yellow cake mix. Now, this started a long time ago. Sometimes when I would fix a cake from scratch, it would be coarse and heavy. And I do not know why, because I had followed the instructions, I'd measured everything carefully. So I started adding just a little bit of cake mix to it. One, to give it a little bit of vanilla so I didn't have to add any to it. And then two, it would help it if it was gonna be coarse, because sometimes the cake mix cakes are just full of air and very little substantial, but anyway. All right, so we've got that in there. I need a teaspoon of vanilla, three eggs, and for my liquid, I need a half a cup of pineapple juice. Okay, I'm gonna mix this and I'll be taking a little bit of a break while this mixes and I'll be right back. All right, now I need one half cup of water, one half cup of vegetable oil of choice, and I have extra pineapple juice just in case it's too dry. So now, I have found out over the years that the more you mix this, the more air you get into it and the lighter it's going to be. Now, this cake has been changed from a traditional cake in two ways. One, the only oil I put in it was the oil or shortening 
required for the cake mix. And I did that by mistake one day. I, I made the cake and then I added the cake made from the cake mix and I forgot to put the shortening in it. That happens. And it was absolutely the best cake I've ever had. So now on my pineapple upside down cake, I do not add the shortening that goes with the from scratch cake. All right, and this is just fine. So we're gonna let that beat another minute. And let me turn my oven on. Okay, we're going to lift this slowly out of the batter and let the centrifugal force of your beater going round fling all of your batter onto the sides of the bowl and your beater will be much easier to clean. Okay. And there we are. All right. Now we have a beautiful batter that's flavored with pineapple juice to go on top of our pineapple upside down cake. And the oil that is in it has been cut uh, by two thirds. And I never realized how good it would taste until I did it. I've tried everything for a good pineapple upside down cake over the years. <clears throat> I even bought one time a pineapple cake. And well, that's all I can say about that. All right, make sure you scrape the sides good and get every drop of batter. Okay. So we are going to take this, I'm going to clean off my top rim first, and I am going to pound it lightly. This does two things. First, it gets the air bubbles out so you don't have bubbles in your cake, and then two, it helps level it out. So let's get this in the oven. All right, your temperature's on 350. If you have a power level button, I set it on a nine and my timer's on 30 minutes. And we'll check it at that time and see if it's ready to come out. Let me give these beans a stir. Doing good, doing good. Okay, welcome back. Uh, Instead of working on our lobster cakes, we are going to work on our salad because even though everything has been chilled, I want the flavors to have a little bit of time to mingle. Now you need assorted salad greens for this. It can be just pure iceberg lettuce, it can be romaine, it can be the torn leaf lettuce if you grow the leaf lettuce in your garden. And now what I do, I do a combination of my favorite ones because why not? So I have iceberg lettuce cut into bite-sized pieces. Then I have about two-thirds of that amount of 50-50 blend, and the 50-50 blend is 50% of the spring greens and 50% of baby lettuce, baby spinach. So I'm going to add that and toss it. And um, if you're going to do it, toss with your hands, you probably want to get you some cheap gloves because this isn't going to be cooked. Now the last salad mix that I have that I put in this is a sunflower crunch. Now different stores have different names for it, but it all has sunflower. This has kale, 
cabbage red as well as the green. Um, it has got carrots, and you can even add other things to it. But this is already ready. It's already prepared. It has no preservatives in it. And every time I see it, I buy it. So now we're going to add this to it. Uh, the salad mix itself has got a large pouch of sunflower seeds, a pouch of bacon, and a pouch of dressing. So, here we are. Now we've got our salad greens. All right, so now in your serving bowl, you're going to put a nice layer of greens, okay? And then in the very center of this, you're going to put two tablespoons or more of broken tortilla chips. All right, and you want it to be a fairly goodly amount. All right, so now we've got black beans, tomatoes, red peppers, and corn. So we're going to put these around the sides. So I'm going to get two tablespoons, a heaping two tablespoons of the red peppers, and put them here. Opposite it, I am going to do the tomatoes. And then on the other two sides, I will do the corn and the black beans. Then I'm going to salt and pepper them with a Mexican cheese. That's a four blend of cheeses. Now look at that. Isn't that a pretty salad? Okay, so I'm going to pass this off to Mary and Kayla, they're going to finish doing the salads for the dinner course, and then we will start our lobster cakes. I'll be right back. Okay, to make your lobster cake, I just adapted our crab cake recipe. Now, what you want to do, just like if you're doing dressing, you want to par cook your onions and peppers until at least the onions change colors because in the time it takes to fry your your lobster or crab cake it doesn't give enough time for those vegetables to finish cooking so let's add those and I have just plain white onions, and then I have got a combination of red peppers and green peppers, fi fairly finely chopped. At least they're not in chunks. All right, now we are going to cook this until those onions become translucent. Now, in the meantime, you're going to Use two eggs, and you're going to whisk them. Now these eggs are the only liquid we use in this recipe. All right, let's see how our And then I'm going to add some butter to it. Okay, now that is cooking, so we're going to leave it alone. And we will stir that in. We are going to give this another little stir. OK, 
Okay, our, our peppers and onions have finished sauteing, so I am going to add those, not to the eggs, but to our dressing. Now this is one cup of Pepperidge Farm herb dressing mix, and I am going to obey it and no more than a half a teaspoon. Okay, now I'm going to add, I'm going to stir this up, that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to add this to the eggs. All right, we're going to mix that up. Now we have to move fast. All right, this is lobster that I cooked this morning. Uh, this was uh, six lobster tails. And I will go over in a minute, as soon as I get this all mixed up, and explain to you how to do that. I'm going to have to use my hands. Here, Mary. Okay, and there we are. Now, I use the same recipe for a crab cake, a salmon cake, and the lobster cake, but now it doesn't work so well with tuna. I do not know, but it doesn't. Right, so here we go. To make your patty. Now I generally line whatever scoop, spoon, or whatever I'm going to mold it with, with saran wrap. I will see if I need it or not. Now you pack it. And then we're just gonna gently turn it upside down. And Look at that. Isn't that a gorgeous cake? Okay. Here we are, getting complicated. All right, let's test. Uh, let's check this out. All right, it's pulled away from the edges of the pound pan, but it's still a little bit shaky in the center. So I'm going to give this maybe five more minutes and I'm going to turn the power down low. Okay. So here we go again. All right, squeeze it down in, and then you're going to turn it out. And there we are. Okay, give me a minute and uh, clean up my mess. We will get a skillet ready to fry these and then we will go on to our next dish, which is gonna be our tenderloin. Girls, this is hot. Okay, we have a skillet heating on the stove. Uh, the oil is a combination of vegetable and olive. And I am very carefully putting in these lobster cakes and hoping they don't tear to pieces on me. And I'm gonna cook them on one side and then I will 
turn them and cook them on the other side. Then I'm going to put them in the microwave for 45 seconds. You can finish cooking anything for 45 seconds, but when you're doing a seafood like this that has been made into a cake, you need to make sure the center of it is done. So, here we are. And I think I can move one of these. Oops, there's that cake. I think I'd better test this with a toothpick. It still jiggles and wiggles just a little bit. Now it's pulled away from the edges, but look at this when you shake it. You see that little center hump right here, how it jiggles? So we just need to test and make sure it's done. And it is. Okay. I've got the fryer turned off. I'm going to put this in for just a few minutes more just to make sure I get nervous about cakes. Okay. All right, now. We're going to start our fillets, and then I'm going to hand them over to Bruce, and he's going to finish cooking them. So let's get some fire on. And I have a vegetable oil. This is Crisco, and I'm just going to cover it. Now what you want to do is sear these and then we will season them. We're going to season them with salt, pepper, and Montreal steak seasoning, but I want that sear first to prevent uh, the moisture from, from coming out. Now, our stovetop grill is heating. You want to dry your fillets. Isn't that a nice cut of meat? <laughs> All right, here's the test, guys. You put those eggs in it to hold it together. And uh, you want, of course, more lobster in it than anything else. Oh, that one is not brown. And that one is. Okay, so here we are. All right. Now all we're going to do is scare, sear the outsides of the tenderloins. If you don't dry them, it, the heat is going to have to go to evaporate the water. This way it goes to just searing the outside. All right, we're going to turn, and they have a nice little sear on them. Now, why the 
underside is searing, I'm going to go ahead and season the top. Okay, now I need some salt. Sear the other side and then, well, season the other side and then I'm turning them over to Bruce. pepper jack grits sauce. Now this is an adaptation of a, a basic Alfredo sauce. I am melting butter. Let me move this over here for you guys. Okay. And I am going to add peppers. So here we are. Now, as soon as the onions start turning, I'm going to add the minced garlic. Do not add the minced garlic at the beginning of the cooking process because it turns brown and burns easily. And, um, yeah, no one wants that in their food, especially in an expensive dish like an Alfredo sauce. Okay, I'm going to add the garlic. That's two teaspoons full. And shake your heavy cream first. And we're going to add it. And we're going to, oh boy, cook it down just a little bit. Oh, it's beginning to brown. Okay, I'm going to move this off and lower the heat a little bit. And then we're going to fix our pepper jack grits and we will be through guys through 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 i haven't had pepper jack grits in two years it is time that is for sure i couldn't tell if what was coming out on my toothpick the batter or if it was the batter but it's not shaking now, and toothpick says it's done. So I'm gonna move this out of the way. All right, this goes in your grits. And if you guys will give me just a few minutes to get everything ready for the pepper jack grits, then we can get those ready to go and we can pass around some samples. I'll be right back. Okay, we have our eggs that have been whisked or scrambled. We have flour for dredging and we have our chilled pepper jack grits that I fixed earlier today. Now, if you do not line it with this plastic wrap, when you go to get it out, 
you're going to have a problem. If you have it lined, all you have to do is turn it upside down and pull the plastic off of it and Eureka. Okay, I'm going to use again a mixture of Crisco and olive oil. Okay, and I'm going to turn on the fire to get this hot. All right, I'm going to slice this about a half an inch thick. Okay. I need to lower this fire just a little bit and probably that one a little bit. We'll just lower all three. Okay. All right, I'm using the width of my finger as a measuring device. I want each person to have two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. nine and ten okay All right. we're going to dredge them in the egg and then in the flour egg and flour and all the way down Now the first time I did these, I did not dredge them in anything, and it was just a mess. So the second time I did it, I remembered about Danny's mother fixing her cornmeal mush and frying it, and uh, she always dredged it. So I just did it in flour for a few times, and that didn't work out so well either. And then I talked to her oldest daughter, and she told me, no, nope, Mom always did it in egg first and then flour, so whatever it was, it worked well for me. That one's a little too thick. All right, let's get some more. Add the rest. All right, two more, and we'll call it quits.
Okay, so we're gonna let these get golden brown on one side and then we're gonna turn them and let them get golden brown on the other. So if you guys will give me a minute to wash my hands, then we will start uh, or finish our, our Alfredo sauce. I can hear Dad now. I can smell that flower burning in your skillet because that just seems to be what I do. All right, I'll be right back. Guys, we're ready to finish up our Alfredo sauce. Now, a traditional Alfredo sauce has got garlic that's been browned in butter, then heavy cream, and then your Romano and your Parmesan cheeses and cook till it's thick. So I have changed it. I've added the onions and the peppers to give it a little bit more flavor, and then pepper jack cheese, a whole 12 ounce package. And once this thickens up, it's going to go on top of our grits, and they'll be absolutely marvelous. Even if you don't like grits, you will like these. <laughs> okay, let me get something to turn uh, these. All right, let's get these turned. Let's see if they are golden, and they are not. So, we're going to give them one more minute while we cook the Alfredo sauce. And we have cooked the green beans, didn't burn them. Uh, we have done the pepper jack grits, we've done the pepper jack Alfredo sauce, we've done the pineapple upside down cake, the steaks, and the lobster cakes. So I think, guys, that I'm going to turn these over to Bruce and I'm going to go out in the dining room and meet our guest and uh, drink some tea and wait for dinner. So thank you very much for joining us. I really appreciate it. What have you made up for me and my guests this evening? Well, we're having a southwestern salad. Okay. Meatless. Okay. And then we're having a surf and turf, and we're going to have a, a beef tenderloin or filet, whatever you want to call it. And instead of lobster, I did uh, lobster cakes. And do you know that took more lobster than what a lobster tail takes? Okay. <laughs> it really did. Well, let's see what it. Uh, and what, what we've got uh, here in our salad. Then we're doing my favorite pepper jack grits. I've waited two years for this night, <laughs> and then uh, we're doing green beans, which are those fresh half runners you got from John Brenneman. Okay. And I did not burn them this time. Okay, good. That's a didn't Chuck, last time I turned them off, but I didn't turn it all the way off, and I went in there to to check and. All you smelled was burnt beans. Oh, I was really? so upset. Well, when there's a lot of stuff going on, that's very easy to do. Recently, my mother-in-law and I decided to make a, a cornbread from scratch. And uh, I helped her do it. And when I left, uh, we had covered it with a towel and everything was good to go. And I came back to the house and I smelled this smell outside. And I thought, someone's burning firewood. <laughs> Walked inside the house and it was all smoky and she had turned off the wrong burner. She turned oh. on the burner that the cornbread was sitting on high, and next thing you know, oh. we didn't have cornbread that night. <laughs> mm -mm. I've been there and done that myself. Well, let's dig into this um, salad. Looking so it's forward a, to it. It's a Southwest salad. Right, you've got um, uh, uh, nachos that okay. have been crushed, red peppers, tomatoes, black beans, um, corn, and then you've got four or five different kinds of salad greens under it. Okay, well, I didn't unwrap my salad, my, my silverware there, and I, I'm behind. Uh -oh. I'm behind trying to get my salad. Now, eaten. Chuck and I will not tolerate your slowing us down tonight. <laughs> <All right. laughs> okay. Well, it took us quite a while to get, get our meal this evening, so. Well. Are we gonna blame that on our producer? No, <laughs> we aren't. I, I just 
am discombobulated today. Uh, okay, for example, pepper jack grits. Yeah. You have to make your grits, then you have to chill them, then you have to slice them, then you have to dredge them, then you have to fry them, and then you have to make the sauce. Okay. I mean, there's a lot of steps. That's why I don't do that every week. So, Becky, you mean you just don't tear open the bag and add the hot water? Mm -mm. No. <laughs> nope, I haven't done that in a long, long, long time. Well, this, this salad has all the ingredients. Uh, beans and corn and tomatoes and the, the chips. Yeah, oh, and it's got Mexican cheese, salt and pepper on it. It's very good. Mm. Chuck here is from down in the south, so he, he likes these type salads, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm. like my, my mother's from Macon, Georgia, and, the, and you can't have a dinner without some sort of salad. Right. If there's two or three people, there's still going to be a salad. All right, I have a cookbook at the house that my daughter bought me for Christmas several years ago. And I, I pull out about 10 cookbooks a week and I go through it. I've only got about 300. And I try to get my oldest ones first so I can find strange and unusual things mm -hmm. that's like a forgotten food. And I found a recipe in the cookbook that Andrea got me for an Awan doll. Have you ever heard of an Awan doll since you're from Georgia? No, I haven't. Mm. Mom's from Georgia. I'll have to ask her what an Awan doll is. Yeah, it's A W E N D A W. Awan doll. So, what kind of salad is it? I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, Peggy's not, it's not an informational thing, it's a mystery that she's it's doing. It's a mystery. With us. How do you okay. make what, what goes into the roll? Uh, 12 cups of water, 4 cups of shortening, 4 cups of sugar, 4 tablespoons of salt, 17 tablespoons of yeast, a dozen eggs, and 32 cups of flour. You didn't okay. think I knew that's it. That's one big roll. <laughs> well, that's, well, that's big 96 roll. big rolls. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, Becky, uh, what have you made up for our main course now? Uh, we're doing... Um, a beef tenderloin and a lobster cake and then pepper jack grits. Okay. I told them that I didn't need the beef tenderloin or the lobster cake, just load me up on the grits. Okay. What and the, then, uh, what are I don't know for how this, well, all right, then we're having those fresh green beans that you got from John Brenneman. It's not dessert. Well, the dessert is my pineapple upside down cake. Do you like pineapple upside down cake? I sure cake? do. Okay. Uh, I have tried pineapple upside down cake so many ways, and I could never find anything to satisfy me. Here's, and here's. one oh. day I was making it to go Thank to my you. mother's house, and I messed up the recipe. And I knew as soon as I pulled it out of that oven that I had messed it up. I took it down there anyway, and it was the best cake I'd ever had <laughs> in my life. So now it's a mess up. So you, so you mess, mess it up, up that way. That's right. It is a mess okay, up cake. Okay, so we have um, lobster cake, mm -hmm. filet mignon, mm -hmm. and um, pepper, grit, pepper, pepper jack, jack grits. grits, and green beans. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we're going to dig Becky, in Becky, I'm not sure, but I'm with you. Those, those pepper jack grits look amazing. Uh, well, let's, let's just boy, see what it, they taste it like. It is my favorite food, but... And I know it wouldn't have any more than three or four hundred calories, but, but well, let's try. It. Oh, thank you. I want to see Chuck's reaction to tasting a, something that Becky worked. I worked two years to perfect this recipe. I had it at a restaurant on, at the beach, and they only had three sides. They had a potato of the day, pepper jack grits, and corn pudding. Mm -hmm. So I don't eat garlic. So I got the pepper jack grits knowing I would not eat them. And I was so hungry, I took a taste and I just thought, oh, this is marvelous. And I, there, you know, there wasn't a large recipe presence on the internet at that time. In fact, there wasn't an internet at that time, and except for what NASA did. And um, it took me two years to get a recipe where it was similar to that. Okay. I worked and worked and worked. 
Well, my mother's from Georgia, and so growing up, grits were a staple, but they were a staple for only breakfast in the house. Mm. So it wasn't until recently that I went to a restaurant, I believe down in the Myrtle Beach area, and they had uh, shrimp and grits on as an entree. Mm -hmm. I had to try it, and I loved it. So we go back to the same restaurant the next year just so I can get that entree, and they've taken it off the menu. It's only a side item. And I thought, you've got to be kidding me. Mm. You're going to pack up. So I'm interested to taste this, too. Well, they took this, the restaurant I went to that had the um, pepper jack grits when I went back next year, they had taken it off. Yeah, they changed those menus down there. Miss well, Becky, that's very good. Well, thank you, Chuck. It's a little bit different. Well, really, it's a whole lot different. So mm. I'm a huge ribeye fan uh, when it comes to steak and with those, mainly all you have to do is salt and pepper and grill it a little bit on each side. What's, what's your take on how you do your meats? Uh, I take them in, I have a stovetop grill where the camera is, and I sear one side, I turn it and season it, because I don't like to put salt on a steak because it'll draw the moisture mm -hmm. out and I want mine wet. And then when the other side is seared, I, I season it. I do salt, pepper, and Montreal steak, mm -hmm. and then I hand them to Bruce, and he cooks them on the flat top while I go on to the next thing. Well, this uh, lobster tastes pretty good. I was so afraid it wouldn't stick together, but it did a pretty good job. Miss Becky, that meat's very good. Well, thank you, Chuck. I see you've got some sauces on the table, but I don't think we need them. Yeah, this is a great steak. Where did you get it? Mm, I bought it at, um, I think it was the Kroger's at Oak Hill. Okay. Because they have an entire butchery section, and they stand there, and you tell them what you want, and they pull it out, and they cut it to order right there. It's very good. So your your uh, pepper jack grits kind of remind me of of folklore and and the way traditions are handed down from generation to generation. It kind of brings me back to a a program we have going on. It's actually directed by Jessica Lilly, who's our host of Inside Appalachia a podcast we have on. And it's the Folkways Project, and it's, it's, it's a six-state regional uh, initiative to develop a, a, a core of reporters that are going to help report on folk life and, and material goods that come from such a thing and, and handed down tradition from generation to generation. I, I saw them, I don't think it was a commercial, maybe it was a five minutes shot mm -hmm. on uh, WVPBS, and I thought that was busy must be really neat so it's, it's really fun show to do it it's it's the main thing that we like about it is it brings people together we did a show there in Beckley uh, about a grist mill operator and a gentleman uh, stood up and was wanting help with his grist mill and he would help the other gentleman uh, with drain his pond because they have to have those ponds to make the water mm -hmm. come through to make the grist mill operate so Two people needing something and helping each other out and I kind of that's like a West Virginia thing isn't it yes it is it is I saw that show it was very good well I saw the show about the gentleman who hand makes the brooms mm -hmm. for the Lions Club I really enjoyed that and when I went to the uh, crafts fair in the Civic Center in November I bought one of the last ones he made Awesome. He sold, he sold his uh, equipment to a young lady up in the northern part of the state. Now her and her family are carrying on that tradition. They started with just making smaller like ornamental brooms, but now they're going to move to making the full-size ones too. Well, I've only used that broom once, <laughs> and I, I, I want to keep it a long time. Right. Well, he made it right, so I'm sure you'll be able oh, to. Oh, boy, yeah. he did. He, he was very good. Now, we used to buy them to use here. And they wouldn't last over six months here, where we have so much sweeping and work to do. That's Jim Schaefer, and he, that's a, a tradition, and he was having a hard time getting folks to, to want to come and learn from him, because he said the younger folks just don't want to work. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Well, 
Every so, now and then uh, you'll find one that's just a real eager beaver and has absolutely marvelous work ethics that moves right, has sort of figured out how to do everything with no wasted action, who studies everything before they do it and immediately do, does it. No time wasted, no effort wasted. I was going to ask Chuck to taste the, um, uh, oh. the rolls. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Yeah, Chuck, you need to taste the rolls. <laughs> I couldn't get a word in edgewise. <laughs> We're sorry, Danny. Okay. I'll start eating. That's very, very good. My mother came up with that recipe. Now, do you do it the same exact way she did it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, wow. Uh, there, she wouldn't let her do it. <laughs> <laughs> right? That is right. My mom is now 91 years old, and she had worked at the inn for quite a few years as, as everything. And then she settled into cooking and she developed our pie recipes, our bread recipes, all sorts of good things. And um, then when Dan and I bought it, I mean, she had done everything. She became the manager and she said, all right, I'm gonna train you. And so for one month, I was a housekeeper. Now I was teaching school. Another month, I washed dishes. Another month, I did this or that. And by the time I had spent six months as a cook, she said, well, I'm through. You're trained. Enjoy it. She moved back home. <laughs> She's kind of clandestine grooming, isn't she? Yeah, She's grooming she you. Was. To, that's awesome. I bet you haven't regretted it, though, have you? Mm-mm. Well, Chuck, tell us a little more about uh, your job down there at the Capitol and, and what all you do. And My job, is, is, Dan, is really awesome to meet so many different people. Uh, the, the West Virginia Public Broadcasting, we do so many different things. We do Mountain Stage. We do uh, the Legislature Today, which focuses heavily on uh, the issues and things that are affecting everyone throughout the state. Just today we had the special session on where, of course, they're taking up issues of education. Uh, you right. get to meet people from all walks of life. Um, I've been on many different shoots for Inside Appalachia, for Legislature Today, for Outlook, all types of shows we've done. And the, the, the neat thing I learned is, I'm sure that folks you know, behind the scenes know, if you have a camera, you can pretty much go anywhere. Yeah, right. And that's something that, that came to be a, a really neat thing. Uh, my favorite thing to do was I, I, I used to direct the live feeds for Mountain Stage, the streams. We'd do the shows there, and it was really neat to not only do the work of cutting cameras and making a show out of you know just various bits and pieces, but also meeting the artists. And when, uh, at the time that we did it, our, our production area was set up in the basement below where the stage was. So the artists, before they went on, would come by and sit and, and hang out with us. And I would be so focused on what I was doing, I didn't notice who was around me at first. And uh, one particular instance, I'm sitting there cutting, and uh, a comment says, oh, that was a really neat shot. And I turn and look, and it's Miss Nora Jones sitting there with me talking about what a good thing is I'm doing. Right. And it, it right. Kind of, I now don't. that's in the cultural center. Yes, sir. And, um, and all of that building is where the stage is, mountain stage is there. And uh, a lot of the shows are on uh, public television. And you guys do all that stuff. Yes, sir. It's, and you it's, put it's, it all together, and you're the director and the and the, and the guy that takes the picture. And well, I, I used to. Now, all the film together. Now that guy's <laughs> name's Chris Oxley. I've, awesome. I've moved up to, like I, I mentioned a little bit earlier before we sat down, a lot of my work now is meetings. So I, I have see. meetings about meetings to get people. I, I like to say I put people in the position to do good work and give them the tools they need. That's my job now. Uh, Chris Oxley and Chuck Frostick and Janet Kanicki and Daniel Walker all work together with the Mountain Stage folks. Uh, Adam Harris schedules the acts and we come in and put them on TV. Uh, it's, it's a nationally uh, distributed show through NPR and it's on over 240 stations across the nation. So it's West Virginia's calling card that goes outside of West Virginia and lets people know what we're doing. Right. And, and you might think by this, the sound of it, Mountain Stage is just old timey music, but it's not. It's music from all walks of life, from all different sorts of people, right. nationally different and internationally. Ones, different shows, different different actors, different uh, musicians right. and all that. And it's, it's very interesting and uh, glad that uh, West Virginia is able to do that. 
And all of this is funded by? Well, it's funded by, it's a mix. It's state funding, it's uh, federal funding, and it's uh, contributions from members and from grants. So it's a, a big pie that makes everything go. And, uh, and you all, I see you on uh, periodically uh, asking viewers to contribute to uh, West Virginia Public Television. Yeah, that, and that's... Public, uh, uh, and and they, do they have radio there as well? Yes, we, that's why we're public broadcasting, because we're radio and TV all radio in one. and TV. That's yes, sir. That's public broadcasting. That's I right. Just get that in my head. That's I'll okay. Right. It's been years. It's going to take us years to get on with, with a new, new way of calling it. But, uh, yeah, we do radio. We do TV. There are fun drives on both. And now more than ever, those are the, the, the membership dollars that we rely on, because state and federal funding is kind of shrinking a little bit. And now we look to the people who actually watch and listen to become members and help support. Well, Becky and I have been supporting uh, public uh, television broadcasting for many years. And we also uh, encouraged our children to uh, watch and uh, now our grandchildren as well because it's very educational. And you can see the world in a different view. And uh, there's many aspects of... Uh, uh, of television or viewing that uh, from conservative to liberal and all of those are a mix uh, and you try to do all of that I'm assuming. Right and, and we, we tr what we do is we bring news and information agenda free. We don't we don't have uh, a slant or a side to anything that we report or bring to you. We try to bring you a little bit of everything and uh, we've been doing surveys recently and some people feel they're underserved or don't see themselves on the TV. But as the way I see is if everybody uh, sees just a little bit of everything, I think we've done our job. But we also have to keep working not to stay within this bubble of what traditional, what people think of public broadcasting. We need to make sure we're getting the voice of the common man, uh, just, just the general population so that they have a voice and have something to come to the table with. decide if you want another serving of pepper jack grits or a no. pineapple upside down cake. No, I think I'll have my pineapple okay. upside down cake. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. I think we'll tough it out, Miss Becky. You yeah, we're going to. I guess. Those, those grits were delightful. Well, dive into it. Let's see what this tastes like. Now, this is the result of a mistake. So what's the upside down of upside down cake? Well, you're, you're up the pineapple, the sugar mixture, the sherry, cherry, and the other pineapple is in the bottom of the I heard the you pan. say that. I heard you say the sherry. Yeah. What's been going what on in the, in the kitchen, Miss Becky? Yeah, right. Now, did you know. get into cherry or <laughs> no, sherry? Or? Sherry? No, I didn't. Okay. But anyway, I understand that. And so that's all in the bottom of the pan. So when you go to serve it, you turn the pan upside down. So it's a pineapple upside down cake. Well, it's very good. That cake is not like any cake you've ever tasted before, is it? Well, it's a good cake. <laughs> Tastes like pineapple upside down. Did you make it different? Well, I've always worked on improving the recipe. And I have tried uh, the pineapple cake mix you buy in the store. I have tried it from scratch, and I have done everything I know to do. So one day I made it, and it was really coarse and heavy, so I started adding half a box of yellow cake mix to it, which is just one more dry ingredient. And um, mm -hmm. uh, that it's never been coarse since. So a lot of the cakes, if I, unless I know for sure that the cake is perfect, and it won't come out coarse or heavy, I add maybe a cup of cake mix. And uh, I was fixing this to take to my mother's house, and I got in a hurry, and I, my, my sheet with my recipe in it had marks and everything coming and going where I had done A, B, C, D, and E to it. And um, I fixed it and took it down and realized that I didn't put the oil in it that went with the cake but I put the oil in it that went with the cake mix, which is the only thing it saved. And I thought, 
okay, I'll go buy a cake. And then I thought, no, I'll take it down. We can always eat the pineapple. <laughs> and it's absolutely the best pineapple upside down cake I've ever had. You messed up. I messed up and I messed up good. <laughs> okay. Well, Chuck, while you're uh, working on your cake there, um, tell us something that no one else knows about you and um, that you can share with the, the audience. I guess uh, I've been thinking about it a little bit because you kind of gave me a hint that you'd ask me that. And uh, some people know this about me, but not a lot of people. I've never, ever had a cup of coffee. Okay. Not one time. And I've lived in foreign countries where they drink everything hot. Not once have I ever had a cup of coffee. Well, there's a lot of young people today don't drink coffee. They start out with sodas and uh, they never get to, I'm looking over at my grandson mm -hmm. and, and his dad and all those that. Uh, so I don't know the draw of Starbucks or any of the coffee houses. And mm -hmm. I've been asked many times, you want to meet for a cup of coffee for a meeting? And I have to think, well, what would I do? <laughs> I have to, you have to have something in front of you at a coffee of... house. Well, now Connor is, does pretty good. He's got a bunch of juices. He drinks milk. He does drink a Coke a day and he drinks tea. So but he doesn't drink coffee. Doesn't drink coffee. That's right. I like to think it's, it's, it's because of that year I spent in Turkey when I was nine years old. Mm -hmm. There they had hot ch chai tea and all the sodas they drank were hot. So everything they drank was hot or at least room temperature. Right. So when I came back, I was determined there was going to be ice in everything I drank <laughs> just because I, that one year spent with no ice. Yeah, that, that'll teach you that. You'll sure. get the strangest looks in Turkey if you ask for a glass of ice for your cup to drink out of because they think, well, that's just for keeping the, the meat cool. Not right. for drinking. Not for drinking. <laughs> well, that's very interesting. And uh, I, I had one that uh, no one, uh, well, there's one person knows about something that, that uh, happened to me in my life. And we were my uh, best friend. We grew up together and I was back from the military and all that. And we decided to go hunting on a Saturday. So we went up in Nicholas County to our famous little place that we hunted squirrels, and um, no one knows about this because I don't think we ever said anything about it. Um, we were driving down this country road, and I was in an old 58 Chevrolet pickup, and it has running boards on the side of it. So we're going down the road, and here comes a vehicle coming straight at us. And I'm saying to myself, you know, uh, he's not getting over. I'm, I'm going to run into him. So I come to a complete stop. Now, the look of my truck is we've got hunting clothes on and we've got a couple of shotguns in the window. And here comes this guy, jumps out of a, a, a car, runs up to the truck, gets on the floorboard of the truck, and he puts a pistol under my nose. And he said, what is your name? And I thought, man, should I have to lie to him? Should I tell him some, some other name? Because maybe the name that he's looking for is my name. So anyway, uh, I said, Dan. And he looks at my buddy and he says, what is your name? And he puts the pistol toward him. And he says, my name's David. And David had uh, hesitated a couple of seconds and the guy cocked the pistol. I thought, oh my goodness, you know. And he said, my name is David. And the guy looked at us both and he says, you're not the ones. Jumped off the floorboard of the truck, went over and got in the vehicle and drove away. And David and I looked at each other and like, what was that? <laughs> Can you imagine if you had lied and said yeah, the wrong name? The wrong <laughs> <laughs> and all these things went through my mind. And, but we went on hunting and went on with what? So you have been back to Nicholas County then? Oh yeah, we go back <laughs> up there all the time go up. Just lock the door? Yeah, just lock, make sure the wind is rolled up. You know, don't run down the road. Wow. Pick up. But anyway, that's uh, uh, my story. Well, Chuck, uh, thanks for coming. Um, we appreciate you coming down to the Glen Ferris Inn and enjoying a meal with us. It's been very pleasurable for us to meet you and learn all about uh, public broadcasting. Yes, sir. Both TV and radio. That's right. And. Uh, we appreciate the hard work that you do for the state of West Virginia, and uh, we, we hope that uh, we get to 
meet again and uh, have dinner again. Sounds like a plan. Thanks you very much for inviting me. I've had a great time. This is a great place you have here. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Miss Becky. You're welcome, Chuck. Well, Becky, you've done another great meal for us, and I appreciate it. You've done a great job, and uh, I'll keep you a little while longer. How's that? Again, two-week minimum. Two-week two, two week minimum, anyway. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> no, we, we tease about this, but she's a great gal. She works very hard every day for the Glen Ferris Inn and myself and our grandchildren and all that. And uh, thanks, uh, folks, for watching Dining with Dan and Becky at Glen Ferris Inn, and hopefully uh, you've enjoyed the show and, and enjoy another one next week. Thank you. Bye. See you next Bye. week.